sit down again. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to continue to have my, um, my mask on with my awesome vision of positivity and super force of believing in everything I can do. But I have to take this off because it's too itchy. <laughs> so just I still I still have it on for that purpose. So we're going to talk about working with your hosts, partnering with your host, and creating the magic that is the show. Whether it is live in person in your home in the form of a cooking class at another person's home as a party or an experience or in the form of a virtual party. And I'm going to talk primarily from the standpoint of a live in-person experience and Shannon's going to come in and talk about virtual. So partnering with your host is really important. It is what pushes your business forward from that day to the next day and beyond. And if you do not work with your host, um, your, your experience or, or your both your show and your customer's experience can be a little bit like this. So let's just see if this works and take a look. Hopefully y'all can hear it. Oh, thanks. I took your advice and had Geico help with renter's insurance. It was really easy. Easy? It'd be nice. Or help with chairs, say chairs. Or help with bookcases, say chairs. Okay. Okay. Look at that. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Or help with chairs. Say chairs. Mm -hmm. We're not going now. Book. Hey, see how easy renter's insurance can be at geico.com. Do you want to do it again? Do you want to play again? Do you want to play again? I love the new place. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I took your advice and had Geico help with renter's insurance. It was really easy. <laughs> easy? It'd be nice. For help with chairs, say chair. Oh, For help Lord. with bookcases, say bookcase. Bookcase. I thought this was the dresser. Isn't that the bed? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. For help with chairs, say chair. Does this mean we're not going out? Bookcase. Book See how easy renter's insurance can be <laughs> at geico.com. together the piece of furniture whether it's the bookcase or the bed or the chair whatever it is and they don't know what they're doing they don't really even know what it is and they're you know they're having trouble and it doesn't look like that piece of furniture is going to get done anytime soon did it nope. so you can't let your shows be that way you have to guide your host you have to be the instructions that are clear and concise and simple that allow success, that allow, <clears throat> if, if those people had had clear, concise instructions, they would have been able to build their bookcase or bed or chair or whatever it was and then go on and go out like they wanted to. So, um, all right, so we're gonna talk about how, how do you do that? What are some ways to do that? First and foremost, like Teresa was saying, you wanna build a connection with your host. And it definitely does not need to be a complicated, long and drawn out process where you are scheduling meetings with her or trying to sit down with her to, to go over all the finer points of everything you want to have happen to show. You don't need to take it from the start time when you get there to the time when you leave, but you do need to give her a roadmap of what it's going to be like. Don't ever assume 
that they know what to do. And I think this happens with us a lot of the times. Um, so how many of you have ever thought, oh, you know, they've had this before. They know what to do. I've, she's hosted a party before. Has anybody ever thought that? Mm -hmm. Of course. But you have to remember, and I want you to go back to that little video of putting together the bookcase. If you Have you ever put together a toy or a bookcase or a bed? Anybody ever put together anything like that and pulled out the instructions and had to find the American, uh, American the English instructions that are like this big? Yes. So once you do that once, do you have it down pat? You can do it again anytime. Like a year later, you could get another bookcase and you don't need those instructions because you did it a year ago. No, 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 no. They need you every time, even if they're repeat hosts. They need your guidance. So pull out your paper and I want you to write down a couple of things that you consistently, currently tell your host about what the experience of the show is going to be like. Whether you do virtual or cooking shows live, write down a few things that you're always consistently telling your host. Whether it's what time you're going to arrive, or whether it's what the recipe is going to be, whatever it is, just jot down a few things that you are consistently telling your host about the experience. And if you're not, then you're going to learn some things. <laughs> so, when you first reach out to your host, you definitely want to kind of establish how she wants you to communicate with her. Ask her, do you do Facebook message? Do you text? Would you rather me call you? It's not a foregone conclusion that people don't want to talk on the phone. Some people, like I have someone, uh, I have a host who I really can only catch her when she's in the car running errands. And a lot of times that works for me too. You know, we're texting and, and Facebook messaging so much that sometimes the phone call actually will work better for people if you know when the right time is. When you do call, make sure you're organized with your thoughts and you know what it is you want to communicate and limit the time. Limit that phone call so that you can really get that important information in. If you do send an email with information, and there's a certain email that we should all be sending that you're gonna, we're going to talk about in a minute, send a quick text that says, just sent you an email. Check it out. And then when you text, try to limit your words. I am so guilty of this. So I have to really, I write my text, and then I look back at it, and I you know, try to edit it and delete as many words as possible. Oops. Okay, so here's some examples of some things that you can text. Do you have 15 minutes to talk about your cooking or virtual party? Let me know what works for you. Or, hey, I sent you an email earlier about your dinner and a dash class. Call or text when you get it. So what happens? Why are, you, why are we doing this? Why are we asking them to, to, to so why are we asking them a question? So they can respond. They have, they have to respond. Right. So they have to respond. If you don't get a response, then you know you need to reach out again and make sure that they're getting the information. All right, so there's really three contacts, three points of contact. And I, this is the a super simple system that I use, and I'm going to give you some specific examples. I'm going to show you my actual text that I send to all my hosts. They're generic, so I do not have to reinvent the wheel every time. But three times you reach out to your, your host. And this information right here, this is actually, I, I kind of took what's on PC University in our host coaching documents and I condensed it down so that it's a very simple format that I can use every time. And do what works for you. If it works better for you to have like a checklist like Teresa and Bobby were talking about, then do that. But this is kind of what I keep as my, my system. I want it to be as simple as possible so I will be consistent and do it every time. So the first time, obviously, you confirm the show date and time and you want to make sure that the host knows the, if the host takes away nothing else from that party, what do you want her job to be or his job to be? What do you want them to do? Invite people. Invite people. Invite, invite, invite. You want people in the door. You've got to have the numbers in the party to be able to do everything you want to do in that party, which is have sales, bookings, and future team members. So start by telling them you're going to invite in, in different ways and make sure that they know 
all those different ways they can do. Don't assume that they know they can invite by text, email, Facebook, and phone call. Let them know, tell them, be very clear and concise, this is what you do. And everyone should be sending the email through Consultants Corner. Do y'all all know how to send the email after you create the show and set up the show page? Show of hands, who sends the email? All right, let's talk about the email. So, when you set up your show on Consultants Corner, you've got show info, you've got show page, you've got guest list, and you've got send host email. Have y'all seen that tab? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. yes. Do you, and, and, but so, when you, if you're not sending that email, then you're not sending your host that immediate confirmation of show date and time. And then you have an opportunity right then and there in that email to tell them to invite in different ways. Once you press send on that email, you pull out your phone, you send the text that says, hey, just sent you an email. Check it out, let me know you got it. That email, and that's just about to say that. That email has language in it that I change, and I, I have changed the wording because I do not send physical invitations out for my hosts, nor do I ask my hosts to send physical invitations out. So there's language in there that talks about physical invitations. I have that sentence removed, and in its place, I copy the direct link that I set up. What's the tab you set up the direct link? Anybody know? Show page. show page, that's right. I set up the direct link on the show page and I drop the direct link into that email. And if once the host replies to my, that she got the email, I'll say, your direct link is in that email, but here it is again, and then I'll text it as well. So that is super important. Honestly, that, I mean, that is critical. That is a critical step, sending that post email and letting them know that it's coming and having them look at it. I also ask them at this first point to create an account with Pampered Chef. Why do I want my host to create an account with Pampered Chef? Does anybody know? So she can look at her host specials. I mean, her host lineup. She can look at her show. Okay, lots of different things. So Annette said look in your show. What would you say? Lineup. So where so you can check her, her thing that she can earn as well as... So she can see some of the host rewards. Yes, what else? Wish list. So she can make a wish list. What else? She can send evites. She can send evites. What else? So she can see like a, a um, like a future party pick benefit. Is that what you mean? What else? She gets excited about the means of using our website and can encourage pets. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and also, so that at the end she can put in her order. She uses her account to put in her order. So I want to make sure she has an account on the front end so that when I'm ready for her to put in her order, all I have to say is sign in, click the cart, and put in your order. And then the second time, and this sometimes all this happens just one, like one day, second, you know, sometimes the first two happen in one day. Sometimes they happen one day to the next. Sometimes it's a few days apart. It just depends. So share your excitement. And obviously you're gonna be doing this from the time you meet her at the party till the time you leave her house and beyond. Um, let her know when you're gonna close your party. And that's as important for you as it is for them, isn't it? Let them know when you're gonna close the party and know in your mind I'm closing that party four days later. And then if you offer recipes, if you offer choices, you can offer your choices. I highly recommend that you either don't offer a choice or you keep it very limited. And then, um, again, ask for a reply so she knows that she receives it. I offered my host for me to bring the ingredients, and then she pays me $20 or $25, or, or some people hand the receipt over when they get to the show. It eliminates the stress for the host, and I can't tell you how many hosts tell me, thank you, that is so helpful. What do we want the host's number one job to be? Easy. And we want them to invite. So if they don't have to shop, they can do more inviting. inviting. So in the third time, you can again, literally feed them words to send to people so they can invite them. At this point, you may hear, oh, I don't know who's coming, I only have five people, or, or you know, it's awesome, I have four people coming. Don't you love that? It's like, yeah. yay, let's triple that. Um, <laughs> So give her some words and ask her to tell everyone who's coming to bring a friend, that they're gonna get an extra ticket into our drawing or a pro I'll do a prize drawing if everyone brings a friend. 
Um, I like saying the extra ticket into the drawing because you're not, I used to say I'd give everyone who brings a friend something, but it's a lot easier to give them an extra ticket. Um, just ask them to bring friends. That's, that's just a no brainer and you can automatically add a few people to the party. And then um, of course you're gonna want to let her know that or him know that it is an option for them to um, to start a business and have it be their grand opening. Um, okay, so I also have created a video that I send to hosts that I'm going to share with you what it looks like. You don't have to do this. Um, I know a lot of people are afraid of doing something like this, and I was not enthused about doing this. But I find it does give a little bit of a personal touch, especially this works for the hosts that I cannot get on the phone because it allows me to give a lot of information, that I, the kind of information I would have had in a phone conversation without a wordy text, and it's a compliment to the email and the text. I don't send this just on its own, um, but if you wanna, you wanna dim the lights, and I'll play this one. Did you send this no matter what? What do you mean? Well, you said like it's, it's like if you didn't have yes. a conversation. Yes. No, I send this no matter what, but it's it. But I, I don't depend on it to be my only okay. conversation. So if I can talk to them, still I do. But um, but it's I find it very helpful, especially in the cases, and there it, there's a lot of these cases where I don't talk to them at all. So I do send it no matter what, though. How do you send it? By text. I text it. I text this link. It's Katie Krieger, your Pamper Chef Consultant. I just wanted to say hi and tell you that I'm so excited to be partnering with you for your upcoming Pamper Chef party. We are gonna have so much fun and we are gonna bring so many recipe ideas and inspiration for busy weeknights to your friends and family who attend. And so I wanted to tell you that I am committed to having your party be the biggest success that it can possibly be. And that's going to translate into tons of free products for you and an awesome time for your friends and family. So I wanted to give you just a few tips that have helped hosts in the past. And the first one is just to get excited. The more excited you are, the more excited your guests are going to be about coming. And you can share that excitement with every way you invite them, whether you're sending a text, an email, putting an invitation on Facebook, or talking to them personally in the grocery store, or giving them a quick call. Encourage them to come and bring a friend and let them know how much fun they're going to have. And I do find that my most successful hosts invite people in multiple ways, and especially don't rely on Facebook alone. You never know what people are going to see on Facebook. So sending something in those many different ways of text, phone call, personal message or in person is really going to go a long way in getting some extra people in your door. So another tip is to simply ask them, hey, can you come? When you put an invitation out there, it's totally normal not to hear back from people right away. Nobody responds the first time they see something. They're sifting through their schedule, trying to figure out if they're going to be able to make it. And they're not even sure if it's something they want to attend. But when they hear from you personally and you tell them, hey girl, I really want to see you. We're going to have fun. I'll open up a bottle of wine. We'll catch up. Then suddenly it becomes something that they don't want to miss. Just that little extra personal attention is going to go such a long way. So just make sure you say, hey, looking forward to seeing you. And then ask that important question, can you come? And you will find out that you're going to be getting yes responses all over the place. But don't get discouraged if you don't hear back from people right away. That's totally normal. We'll keep in touch with them throughout the next few days and find out how excited they are about coming as it gets closer to the party. So I just wanted to tell you again how excited I am. We're going to have so much fun. Watch for a little invitation that I'm going to send you by text that you can use to blast out. You don't have to do anything else but use this little invitation. It's perfect for putting on Facebook. You can email it, and of course, you can send it to all the contacts you have in your phone. It makes it so super simple. And all you have to do is concentrate on inviting people and getting excited. I'll be sending you a couple of more messages as we get closer to your party over the next seven to 10 days. And be sure to call me or reach out to me in any way if you have any questions at all. 
So I'll talk to you later. <coughs> See you soon. Bye. <coughs> Do yeah. you send it to each person personalized and saying their name? No. 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 Okay. I just copy a, that link. I was just making sure. It's a recording, so you can send it to anybody. Katie, if you hit receive, I think it'll. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 Resume slide check right there. The resume, right there. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, no. I mean, if I book in really close, I will send that video plus the next two slides I'm going to show you and just maybe again ask them to let me know they received them and I, I, I want it to be as simple and as streamlined as possible so that I can definitely just send these out just to everyone and make it easy on me and have them get the information as, as quickly and easily as possible. Do you have a separate video for virtual? I don't do as many virtual, so no, I don't send, when I do virtual parties, I don't send that video. Um, when I do virtual parties, I usually just communicate with them through Facebook um, Messenger, and I use different little slides that kind of tell the host different things. And Shannon's gonna go over some of that um, in a second. So, all right, this is, a, this is another text that I send, and it's the stock, so it's just basically something I send to everyone. Like you said, it doesn't have to have a name. Now, one, it's, it's a photo that, I've, that I have saved in my phone, so I can add a person's name to it, of course, and I can add any other information I need to in the little text format. But it says, top tips for a super party. Invite in many ways. Text, email, Facebook, a person on phone. Follow up and say, are you coming? Ask those coming to bring a friend. Ask those unable to come until, to order. Keep inviting until I arrive. Because we want the host to what? Invite. Right. And saying are you ask telling them to ask are you coming is a big thing. Um you you know, think about when you get an invitation. If nobody knows whether you're coming or not, if you think you are completely anonymous and no one will notice whether you're in the door or not, you it really does not settle in your mind about something. You almost don't even make the decision of whether or not to go until either the last minute or until there's something really drawing you to go. But if someone says to you, are you gonna be there? You have to immediately decide how to answer that. So by them asking their friends, are you coming? It, it, at the very least, it answers the question of whether they, who, they know who's gonna be there or not. You know, at least you're going into the situation without the surprise. I have no idea who's coming. Why don't you know who's coming? Because you haven't said, are you coming? So that is, a, that is something that is, I have found has really changed, at least for me to know who's going to be in the door or not. Okay, and then this is another one that I send, and I usually send this one the day before the party. This is something that I send for them to maybe think of some people they haven't invited and just kind of add a little excitement the day or the or maybe two days before the party it says recipe for the perfect crowd mix together five co-workers or neighbors five family members five friends for best results be sure to include three from each category spread around your party direct link add a dash of orders from those who can't make it season with extras ask anyone to bring a, a buddy now we are cooking get ready to serve a super fun time um and last but not least the last part of host coaching is to really, at the very end of that, um, whether it's right before, well you, but right before the party starts, of course, right before the party day, you wanna say that she can have it as her grand opening. But the last part of host coaching is actually after the party happens, because you want that host to work with you again. You wanna build that relationship. So you, like, I love that Kathy mentioned about the people who you have in your customer base who are gonna continue to order with you. So you want to cement that relationship. So she should always hear as you're leaving the house or whenever, sometime during the night, how much you enjoyed working with her, how much fun you had, how beautiful, beautiful her home is, how lovely her friends are. Give her that compliment and say, and a lot of times I, I believe that with my whole heart because these hosts become our friends. Mm -hmm. Say, I would really love to have you on my team. You're so sweet and you were so organized. You were so pleasant to work with. I loved how you responded to me. 
I really would love to have you on my team. These are the types of people I'm looking for. Um, would you like to be a part of, of the Pampered Chef family? And it's a it's a win-win. She could say thanks, but no thanks, but she's gonna leave with the feeling of honor that you asked her. And the feeling of honor that's gonna leave to lead to loyalty, future hosts, and future business. And think think about the, some of the your favorite parties that you've had and how many parties have come from that. That's because you forged that relationship with your host. And I'm going to leave you at last with a um, quote from Doris Christopher. And this speaks to inviting your host to join your team and inviting her to have that relationship with you for future business no matter what. And it says, an invitation is a compliment. An invitation is never pushy, pesky, or aggressive. An invitation honors the individual, honors the opportunity, and honors you. An invitation is the height of hospitality. After all, hospitality is what the Pampered Chef is about. Your customers and hosts deserve your gracious invitation. So that's it for me. Love, Love it. it. Love it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, can y'all hear me because I hate microphones. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about virtual parties and host coaching. So 95% of what Katie said to do before the party starts with a, an in-home party, you're still going to do that in a virtual party. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So I'm going to, go, so you all know where the new virtual party packs are, yeah. right? Okay. How many of y'all do virtual parties? Oh, wow. All right, so we got a lot of people in here. Hello. Perfect. How many of y'all have um, wrapped your head around these virtual party packs yet? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start off by telling you guys that Paper Chef did a year-long year -long studies and numerous pilots to come up with these party pack programs, okay? They've been doing party packs for in-home parties for a while now, and this is just the virtual side of the in-home party pack. And it is fabulous! Yes. For two years, I have been making an outline for my virtual parties. I am 100% virtual, and I share them with my team. It is very time-consuming to make these outlines. So when they came up with this, I was like, oh, I'm done. No more lines of chatter. Um, but this is just a recommendation from Pampered Chef. If you have a system or you have a party, an outline that works for you and it's doing well, great, stick with it. Same thing with host coaching. However, Pampered Chef does offer a lot of tools for virtual party host coaching. So um, when I book a party, and if, when it's a virtual party, I also do send out a host packet. So um, I still continue to do that. And on here, the screen went blank. What the heck? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. All right, so um, let me see where it is. Got to remember, I wrote notes because I'm still trying to maneuver it. So, uh, but I don't know. so send out a host package for the as soon as you book the party. Because just like Katie said, you want to form a relationship with your host from the very start and letting her know that you will be partnering with her so that you all can have the greatest experience. Because just like in a, in a in home party, it is an experience. And that's what Pampered Chef is calling it now. It's a virtual party experience. And it makes it a little bit more difficult to do that virtually. So um, you're gonna have to let her know how a VP will run and what her role in the show is going to be. So in the virtual party packs, in the training section, 
there is this little guy here. And you want to include this in your um, in your host packet, and it's the party planner. And it is a great document. I copy it front to back, and it tells the host step by step what's which to expect, what she's gonna what is expected of her, and what you all are gonna do working together. So you're gonna have her block her dates, make her make her wish list because when she finds out what her wish list is and shares it with you, you're going to then work together to reach that goal. Um, create her guest list. Just like what, um, what Katie said, you want her to invite in more than one way. Just because it's a Facebook party, do not rely on Facebook alone for invites. Text, email, phone call, private message, that directly gets to them. But make sure you're friends with them because then they won't see it. Um, you want her to make sure she's collecting those outside orders. Some people don't have Facebook. Some people gave up Facebook for Lent. How many of y'all heard that one? Yeah. All right? Collect those outside orders. Then during the party, what she's going to expect, okay? What to expect. And I'm not going to go through all this. I'm going to blow through this really fast because this is all in the training. But in the training, they're going to tell you, ask your host to either, to welcome her guests. If you were at an in-home party, they're walking in the door. She's going up to them saying, oh, hey, Katie, how glad. I'm so glad you could come. Thank you for coming, right? You want to do the same thing at a virtual party. She can either comment when you have your roll call, have her comment. Thanks for coming. We're glad you're here. I do the same thing as a consultant. Oh, Katie. Katie says, oh, I know the host because our kids go to the same school. Oh, I'm so glad you made it, Katie. We're so glad you're here. I hope you enjoy your time with us this week. Okay? Encourage your host to make a video. That's what the guide is going to tell you to do. And it's going to give you instructions to give to her on how to make a video to welcome her guests. Short and sweet, all right? So prepare your host for that. And if she doesn't want to make a video, she doesn't want to go live or she doesn't want to go video, she can do a post, that's fine. She can write a post. And also goes over the host rewards. And you see where this little line is right here? This is your goal. I also highlight that. So it kind of gives an extra oomph to it. So you, you're shooting for that $1,000 party. Um, okay, so that is one of the things that I just started including in my, my host packets. So you want to ask your, uh, just like Katie said as well, ask your host what is her preference for communication. Because if she is doing a virtual party, she's probably a techie person. She probably wants to communicate via text or Facebook Messenger more than a phone call. But you definitely want to have at least one personal phone call with her. You gotta let her know that you're a live person. All right, switch over from my notes. Um, again, your host's number one job is to get the people going. Not just to invite them, but get them going. It's a little bit more crucial in a virtual party to have them actually click that going in an event. You want 20 to 30 guests going to have a successful party. Um, so what I've tried to do, what I started doing, and I just started using the virtual party packs this month because they just came out, became available to us. So what I did is the very first one that I booked, I sent my host, there's, um, let me go back to this. 